Do you know what a psychopomp is? I, I've never heard the term before. I was stuttering again, unsure of myself and almost hoping that he wouldn't tell me. Zaki is a psychopomp. Holding his forearms on the table, he leaned forward to explain. She conveys the dead to the afterlife. Every culture has sacred stories that speak about these beings. Most relate to animals. In religious texts from around the world, these guides have been described as everything from dolphins to birds, bees, and foxes. The stories from the Aztecs and the Greeks have dogs who serve as the escort. Think Cerberus guarding the gates of Hades with a singular appetite for living flesh only allowing the spirits of the dead to freely enter the underworld. I swallowed and nodded for him to go on. Sometimes there are human representations, like the Norse Valkyries or the Roman Charon, ferrying the dead across the river Styx. The Grim Reaper with his scythe is all over headstones from the Victorian era. These beings can take on any form they choose. I sat there in stunned silence. Even after all that I have gone through with the unseen world— I would not have believed him if I had not had first-hand experience with her disapproval. He looked at me and gave me a second before he continued. Do you understand the nature of your offense? I interfered with what is rightfully hers. More than that, she protects and shepherds these souls. She saw you take out your anger on one of her flock. What did that dead child do to elicit such a response from you? It, he kept grabbing my hands and pulling on my clothing. I was afraid Steve, the guy I was training with, would notice. Things can go downhill fast if that happens. I'd have to move. It's happened to me before. Gritting my teeth to keep my emotions in check, I tried to explain. The dead see me and they're all over me. If I don't push them away, if I don't punch, kick, and scream to get them off me, I stop seeing my world. What they see and feel takes over and it's always a horror show of their last minutes before dying. I roughly yanked the bangs back and out of my eyes and forced myself to keep my voice low. If someone sees me when any of this is going on, the best thing that happens is that they want to medicate the hell out of me. My own family tried to put me away for shit's sake. I took a deep breath to try to regain some calm. Look, I don't want to have to move again and I can't risk being sent back to the psychiatrist. The woman cleared her throat and stepped forward. My goodness, where are my manners? The words were soft and had the gentle twang of Appalachia, but they were spoken by reflex and lacked true warmth. She took Bodine's set of sheets and together with her own folded bedding, she set them down on a scrubbed, unfinished table next to the potbelly stove. My name is Parmelia Sinclair, and this is my cousin Bodine Sinclair. Bodine extended his hand to me, and before I could respond, the dead hand shot forward and grabbed it. Bodine's eyes went wide and impossibly, he turned a whiter shade of pale, yanking his hand back as if the contact burned. Whoa, girl, that ain't right. Parmelia ducked back behind Bodine and watched me with frightened eyes. Lucas looked back and forth between the cousins and me, trying to make sense of what just happened. What's wrong? I took a step back to reduce whatever threat I might represent and improvised. Um, I guess I have a strong grip for a girl. Cam was smirking, and Zaki showed a toothy grin. Neither was going to be any help to defuse this situation, so I decided a distraction might be the best way forward. Pleased to meet you both. I'm Via Saunders, and this is my friend Lucas Tremaine. As I hoped, their attention was immediately taken by the presence of a celebrity. Mr. Tremaine, it is a true pleasure to meet you. We are huge fans of your show. Parmelia gushed as she stepped in front of Bodine, who massaged his hand and shot me small looks of shock and dismay, but mainly turned his attention to Lucas. Please call me Lucas. Turning on the charm, he shook both their hands, and this simple act seemed to put them more at ease. I want to thank you both for inviting us down here. I'm really looking forward to investigating the anomaly you witnessed. Can you tell us anything about what you experienced? Bodine and Parmelia shuffled their feet, glancing at Cam and me without quite meeting our eyes. They exchanged a look, and Bodine cleared his throat. Well, you see, the main problem is that we don't really understand what it is we're dealing with. I could feel Hannah watching me as I gazed at her husband, so I forced my eyes to look at her instead. And how are you feeling today? Her eyes were hard as she answered me. About the same, but at least I'm not falling asleep every few minutes. 
She sat up a little taller in the bed and Zaki readjusted her body so it pressed more fully against Hannah. I like to stay aware of what's going on. Her eyes bore into mine and her lips compressed into a hard line. Obviously caught in the act, I unknowingly did my best deer-caught-in-the-headlights imitation. Would you like me to run to the lobby and bring you some newspapers? Lucas shifted, ready on her word to run this errand. Hannah's eyes softened as she looked at him. No, sweetie, I meant it in the larger sense. Her hand reached to gently touch his cheek. Kissing her hand, Lucas stood. Okay, if you don't need anything, I'll go back to work. Turning to me, he smiled. Thanks for bringing Zaki for a visit. As he left the room, Hannah turned her acid gaze back in my direction. You are lusting after my husband. I don't, just don't. Hannah let her eyes drift away and she hugged Zaki tightly to her. I don't have time for bullshit.